Computers can help us with so many things, either for business or at home. And these days, one of the great capabilities of many computers is that you can go online. That is, you can get connected to the Internet. Learning how to use the Internet can be a challenge, but it can be a lot of fun. There is a lot to learn, and if you're not familiar with computers, it can seem daunting. But this video, Computers Made Easy, will show you how to use the Internet step by step and make it easy for you. The Internet can provide you with so much. You can buy just about anything. You can find out information about any topic. You can have your say when you join special interest groups. And you can get the latest information about topics you're interested in, all through your computer. To enable you to review and understand how to use the Internet, we've divided this program into easily accessible segments, like the chapters in a book, so you can go back and replay any of them as often and whenever you like. The first part covers the basic operations and background to the Internet. Even if you know some of these basics, it's important to go back to make sure you fully understand the full potential of using the Internet. Knowing how and why the Internet was developed, what it is, what's on it, and how it works, is important information to help you get the most out of using the Internet on your computer. To get yourself connected to the Internet requires a certain level of hardware. In this segment, we show you the types of computer hardware and software you will need, what to consider when you choose a service provider, and once that's done, how you connect and disconnect from the Internet. The more you use the Internet, you will discover how easy it is to effectively access the tremendous amount of information and services that are available. In this part of the video, we will show you how to send and receive email and how to get connected to news groups that may interest you. The World Wide Web is an exciting part of the Internet that is growing at a tremendous rate. This segment will show you what you need to do to effectively access the World Wide Web and use its many services. Watching this video, Computers Made Easy, Discovering the Internet, will give you the level of knowledge and understanding of the Internet you will need to use this incredible system with confidence. To gain the most from this video, you will need a personal computer that is linked to the Internet through a service provider. It's also important that the computer, the mouse, the modem, and the software program are operating correctly. You will be using both the mouse and the keyboard to operate the computer during the course. If you haven't used a computer keyboard before, don't worry, because you will learn the skills you need as we work through the video. With the correct equipment and software in place, you are now ready to commence the first segment of our video tutorial, Accessing the Internet. The origins of the Internet we can all access today began as a United States Defense Department project in the 1960s to ensure that computer information could be transmitted even in the event of a nuclear war. By the early 1990s, this system was opened up to allow everyone access, even people at home. Today, the Internet is a computer network that joins together many millions of smaller networks around the world. To enable computers on the Internet to communicate, they must be able to easily locate each other and have a common language. When data is sent over the Internet, it goes in what is called the Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, or TCP, IP. For computers to be able to find each other on the Internet, they have to have an address. These are known as a domain name. In our sample address, we have used the domain name example. The next part of the address is a code for the kind of organization. For example, GOV represents a government organization. EDU represents an educational institution. And COM represents a commercial company. 
Most computers in the USA have no country code, while many countries around the world have their own country code. Some you might see are UK for the United Kingdom, AU for Australia, CA for Canada, and FR for France. When you are connected at home, you will normally be given your own username, which is placed in front of the domain name and followed by the at symbol. This is your email address. Many computers have the capacity to be connected to the Internet. If you currently have a PC with at least a 386 processor chip, or a Macintosh with at least an 8036 chip, and at least 16 megabytes of RAM, you can probably get connected. But like most operations with computers, the more power you have, the better. You will also need a modem, which is a device that converts the digital output of your computer into a signal that can be transferred around the world. The modem is connected to a telephone or cable line that links it to the host computer. If it's your only telephone line, you won't be able to receive or make calls while you are connected to the net. The computer you are connecting to will also have a modem that will convert the signal back to digital so the receiving computer can interpret the messages. Modems can be either an internal board inside your computer or an external device that sits next to your computer. Data is transferred by a modem at a speed that is measured in bits per second. The higher the transfer rate, the less time you will spend waiting for information to be downloaded. So buy the biggest capacity you can afford, and at least 28,800 bits per second. If you want to access moving video or animated images, or listen to sounds on the Internet, you may need to have additional hardware put into your computer. These days, most new computers will be equipped with a graphics card and a sound card that will allow you to enjoy this further dimension of the net. You also need to have software that is written specifically to connect your computer to the Internet, the main one being browser software. These programs will enable you to access the World Wide Web and send and receive email. The most popular browsers are Microsoft Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator. While the windows look different, the functions they perform are basically the same, and whichever browser you have, it should be relatively easy to use. While some businesses and individuals will have a permanent connection to the Internet, most of us will need to pay a service provider, that is, a company that will provide you with a connection to their computers that are in turn connected to the Net. Some companies, like America Online, will provide online services, which means that as well as providing access to the Internet, the company will also provide access to services on its own network. These could include home shopping, information for businesses, news from around the world, and a wide variety of entertainment. There are a variety of cost structures that different companies will charge, but it will usually involve a minimum monthly fee to provide you with access time. Shop around and find what's best for you based on cost, features, and benefits. When your computer hardware is set up, your software installed, and you've arranged your access, you are now ready to connect to the Internet. To connect, you first need to open your software. On this computer, there is an icon on the desktop that opens the connection software. Depending on how your computer is set up, a box could appear that requests you to enter a password. The password will have been given to you when you arrange the connection with the access provider. When you enter the password, make sure you don't have the caps lock on because some systems will only recognize lowercase and will not be able to connect. While the modem is connecting, you will hear dial tones and other noises and see flashing lights. When the connection is made, you may hear some other strange sounds. Don't worry, this is normal. When you have made a successful connection, a display on your screen will let you know you are connected and a readout will appear that shows how long the connection has been operating. A small icon will appear at the bottom right-hand side of the computer that shows the connection is in place. To disconnect from the net is easy. Just right-click on the small icon and select Disconnect. You will hear a click as your modem disconnects from the service provider. Email 
is short for electronic mail, which simply means that you are using a computer to send messages to other computers connected to the net. It's a lot cheaper and quicker than sending letters through the post or by fax. Just as you have an address where mail is sent to you, you will also be given an email address when you open your account with an access provider. Everyone connected to the net has their own unique email address, and you need to know it to be able to send them an email. An email address is made up of two main sections, but can have other parts. The first section is the username, which is usually the name of the person using the email address. The username can be just the first name, a combination of initials, just the last name, or a nickname. It may include numbers, or even be just numbers by themselves. It doesn't matter. When you open your account with the service provider, you can decide with them what to use. The second part of the address, which follows the at sign, is the domain name, which is the name of the computer where your email address is located. You need to be careful when taking note of email addresses because they can get fairly complex. And remember, there are no spaces between the different parts of the address. If any part of the address is wrong, you won't get connected. The email that you send travels from your computer to another called a mail server, and then across a network of mail servers until it is delivered to its destination. To send an email, you first need to open your email software window. On this computer, we have Outlook Express installed, but regardless of what software you use, the features should be similar. There is a section for the folders where your incoming and outgoing emails are stored. When you select one of these folders, this section shows the emails that are stored. These are the messages stored in the inbox, and these are stored in the outbox. This window also lets you easily manage your email. For example, you can print if you want to, you can reply to it, or on-forward an email with just one click of the mouse. You can attach other files from your computer, and you can keep an address book for frequently used email addresses. We'll show you how to do all this soon, but first, let's send an email. First open the email program and select the New Message button. You then have to fill in the header before your message can be sent. It's like addressing a letter. The first part of the email form is the Mail To section, which is the space for the address you want to send it to. Enter the address and then add any other address you want to send the same message to in the next box. The following box, which is the subject box, is very important. You need to type in a line that best describes the content of your email. Because people get many junk emails, they often filter out the messages based on the content. It's important you make this line as informative as possible because it's stored on the computer with other information about the message to let the reader know what the email is all about. You can also attach a file to your email if you want. You may have a spreadsheet and a picture you want to include. To attach the file, simply open up the Options menu, select Attach, and then choose the file. It's that easy. If you receive a message with a file attached, you open it by simply clicking on the file name. Follow any instructions given, and your computer system should be able to open it. The main part of the email window is the space where you can type in your message. For short messages, this is the way to go. However, for longer messages, it's a good idea to type in your text into a word processing package, such as Microsoft Word, before you connect to your service provider. This will usually give you more options when you type your message and allow you to save it to your hard disk. Once you've written your message and are happy with it, all you have to do is copy and paste the text into the email window. Then just dial up and connect and select the Send button. It should only take a few seconds to send.
If you have made the connection to the net, the message will be instantly sent. A message will show that the email is being sent or if the connection can't be made. If you are not connected, your computer should save the email and send it next time a connection is made. Once you've sent the message, you can check by opening the Sent Items box. The details of the message will be included in the list. Most software programs for email will let you set up an address book for your most frequently used addresses. Open the address book by selecting the icon. To add a new name, select New and enter the details. When you want to use the address on an email, you simply open the address book and select the name by double-clicking with the right mouse button. It will automatically appear in the Mail To part of the email address block. When emails are sent to your address, they are stored in an electronic mailbox by your service provider. You can easily access and clear your mailbox whenever you want. To do this, you connect to your service provider and open your email software window. Select the icon button for New Mail and the system will tell you if any messages have arrived. In some software packages, new messages will be automatically downloaded into your computer, while with other programs you will need to stay online to access the messages. You can then close the connection with your service provider before you read the messages. Open the inbox and there will be a list of the new messages showing the sender, the subject, and the date. To open an email message, just double-click on its name in the list and it will appear on the screen. Once you've read the message, you can keep it on the list by just closing it. You can delete it if you don't want it anymore, or you can quickly reply to it or forward the message by selecting the relevant button. It's all really easy to do. If you like getting email, you can join a mailing list. There are many of these special interest groups where a great variety of topics are discussed through email. An index of publicly accessible mailing lists is available at this web address. When you go to the web page, a menu of available topics will appear on the screen. Click on the subject area you are interested in, and you will see a screen with mailing lists related to that topic. Pick the one you want by clicking on the title. You will then see a screen with a short description of what is being discussed by the subscribers. When you join a mailing list, you will get a copy of all emails sent to the list, and you can download them as you would any other email. You can also send email messages with your own comments for distribution through the mailing list. You just send them as you would with any other email to the address that is normally included on your email that welcomes you to the site. To begin accessing the mailing list, you first need to subscribe. While how you subscribe can differ from place to place, it usually involves sending an email to an address that will usually be included with the information on the screen. Follow the instructions, and within a short period of time, you will get a return email welcoming you to the mailing list. This first email will usually include information about how the list operates and provide contact addresses if you have some questions or problems. You can also join discussion groups covering an enormous range of topics. Your access provider will give you access to these news groups as part of their service. There are many thousands of news groups on the net, each one covering a particular theme. Trains, lighthouses, all types of music, jokes, whatever your interest, you should be able to find a news group to suit. Some news groups offer expert advice and answers to questions on a particular subject but others are there just to facilitate discussion on a particular topic. Each news group has a name with two main sections. This name helps to identify the subject of the group. The first part of the name describes the subject matter, while the second part more closely defines the topic. 
Some of the more common abbreviations used for news groups are biz, a news group for business which covers topics such as career opportunities, trends, and product development. Rec is used to cover a wide range of recreational news groups with topics such as sports, music, and sewing. Comp is used for computing news groups that cover all aspects of computer technology. The Miss or Miscellaneous News Group is for everything that doesn't neatly fit into the other groups. The second and subsequent parts of the name more closely define the topic. In this example, the rec or recreational abbreviation is followed by sport and then swimming. You will normally get access to news groups through your internet service provider and you don't have to pay any more to join. Depending on which browser you are using, you should be able to easily get access. In Netscape Navigator, get online by connecting to your service provider and then open the Newsreader window. If you are not sure what you are looking for, just select the button that opens a list of all available news groups. So let's have a look at the newsreader screen. It will have a title bar with a list of the news groups shown in the main window. There will be folders that hold a number of news groups. On the screen will be a number that shows how many news groups are contained in each folder. To open a folder, you click here on the small box with a plus sign. The news groups in the folder will be listed and this figure gives the number of articles in the news group. You can use the scroll bar to quickly move up and down through the list of folders and news groups until you find the topics that interest you. To join the news group is easy. In Netscape Navigator, you just select the name of the group and click on the subscribe button. A tick will appear to indicate that you've joined the news group. To remove yourself from the news group, you simply select the group and click on the unsubscribe button so the indicator disappears. Other systems may have a button or a pull-down menu item that you need to click to join a group. Once you have joined news groups, all the articles that are posted to those groups will be downloaded to your computer from another computer called a news server. To access articles, first click on the news group. New articles will be listed, and you just click on the article you want to download and read it. Once read, the indicator on the article will disappear, and the article won't be shown again. Only new articles that haven't been read before will be shown the next time you open the news group. You need to regularly check the news group because many news servers only keep new articles for a few days before they are deleted. When you are ready to send your own article to a news group, you have a number of choices. You can join a discussion that is already underway, or you can send an email as a personal comment to a news group contributor. You can also start a new discussion topic if you want. Just click on the name of the news group where you want to send your message, and then click on the New Message button. A window called the Message Composition window will open. In the subject box, write a concise summary of your article so people can easily understand what it is about, then write your article in the main part of the window. When you have completed what you want to say, get online by connecting to the Internet and click on the Send button. If you are responding to an existing article, this menu provides a way you can do this easily. If you want to send a personal email to the writer of a newsgroup article, select Reply to Sender. If you want to reply to an article in a news group, select Reply to Group. You can easily do both at the same time by selecting Reply to Sender and Group.
The window that appears will already be addressed and will have a complete copy of the article that you are responding to. You can edit it and write your own comments to put your point of view. When you are happy, connect to the internet and click on the send button. One of the best features of the internet is the World Wide Web. It's also known as WWW or simply just the web. It gives your computer access to an incredible range of sites, including games, tourist information, sports, movies, music, and much more. All around the world, millions of host computers hold countless documents called web pages, and your computer makes it easy for you to access them. To view web pages, you need to have a browser. When you start the browser, a web page will usually appear in the window. It may take a little time, and the screen could be blank for a short while because it can take some time to bring the page over the web. There are two main browsers, Microsoft Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator. This one is Netscape Navigator. While your screen may look different, depending on what software you've installed, the features are basically the same. Let's have a closer look at the page. At the top left-hand side is the name of the web page. On the top right is the Minimize button, which allows you to temporarily remove the page from the desktop. A button for the file will then appear on the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. Just click on that button to make the file reopen. Beside that is the Maximize button, which lets you make the page the full size of the screen. And besides that is the X button, which enables you to close down the program and exit the Internet. On the next bar are the menus. These contain pull-down lists of commands, which allow you to instruct the system what you want it to do. For example, the View pull-down menu, amongst other things, allows you to hide and show toolbars. Spend some time to review all the menus to understand what they allow you to do. The next bar contains a series of icons that enable you to quickly make the most commonly used commands. For example, by clicking these arrows, you can move backwards to pages you've looked at earlier and then go forward again. And by clicking the Home button, you can move quickly back to your default home page. At the other end of this bar is a small picture that moves while the browser is searching the web. It's an indicator that the system is still searching for the pages you are seeking. This box shows the name of the page being currently displayed. The main part of the window is where the contents of the pages are displayed. This bar on the bottom of the screen shows what task the browser is undertaking and if any programs have been minimized. The web can be used to find out information about so many topics. For our example, let's assume that you are planning a European vacation and you want to stay in a small village in France. This is how the World Wide Web can help. Your service provider should normally give you access to a web page listing different search services that are available. You simply need to select the one you want off the list. If you don't have access to a list, here are the URLs of two of the bigger and better known directories, Yahoo and Lycos.
We'll use Yahoo for our example. The home page of Yahoo has a list of subject areas that you can choose from. These are called hyperlinks, and as you select topics, you move to another level of the directory with more specific subject areas. You keep narrowing down your topic until you are finding pages with the information you are seeking. Another way you can use Yahoo to find the information is to type in a description of what you are seeking. Right-click on the search button, and in a short while the system will provide you with a range of web pages that match the description you have given. Other systems on the web enable you to search for keywords that closely describe the topic you are after. These systems are known as search engines. Two examples are Excite and AltaVista. The search engine will look through millions of web pages, and any pages that have the words you've entered will be displayed on a list. Each entry on the list will have a hyperlink to the web page that has the key words on it, and a short description of the contents of the page. Look at the descriptions on the list, and if one appears that it may contain the information you want, just click on the hyperlink to get to the page. If it's not what you want, simply click on the back button and go back so you can choose another hyperlink. It is possible your search will bring up thousands of page references, far too many to view. To make the search more specific, you can use a range of words and symbols known as operators. How you do this can vary between search engines, so you will need to check, but the principles are the same. You can ask that two or more words be used to select the page by joining the words with a plus sign. In our example, we could use apartment plus rental plus France. You can also exclude pages with certain words by typing a minus sign in front of the word. For example, you could have apartment plus rental plus France minus Provence if you don't want information about Provence. Entering more than one word without an operator will normally make the search less specific and result in many more addresses on the list. Most search engines recognize upper and lower case as the same, so it doesn't matter which case you use when you type the keyword. However, spelling is extremely important. The search engine will only find pages with the exact same spelling, so it's important that it's correct. The search engine will display the results in descending order of how close the match is to the keyword. Search engines use different criteria to sort and analyze the information they find on the web, but it usually involves how often or how soon the requested word is used in a document. Once you have completed your search for the information you're after, the Internet can enable you to get more information or submit your views about the information. In our example, we can submit a request for information about the availability of the apartments by simply filling out the form and clicking on the hyperlink to send the email. It's that easy. Once you start regularly using the web, there will most probably be pages that you will want to access time and time again. The system allows you to easily create a list of shortcuts to quickly access these pages. In Netscape Navigator, these shortcuts are called bookmarks. To add a bookmark on your system is easy. When you are on the page you want to add to your list, 
Just click on the Communicator pull-down menu and select Bookmarks. Then choose Add Bookmark. The address of the page will then be added to the list. To go to the page, just select it from your bookmark list. In Internet Explorer, these shortcuts are called favorites, but the process of adding a bookmark is much the same. To make it even easier to locate your favorite pages, you can organize the bookmarks into folders. Just select Edit Bookmarks, then use the menu to create the folders, then drag the shortcut to the folder you want it to be kept in. As you access pages on the web, you may find some that you want to keep on your computer. To save the text that is shown in the web page window, just click on the File menu and then select Save As. This will open the Save As dialog box. You will then need to give the file a name and instruct your computer on where you want it saved. You also need to tell the computer how you want the page saved. You do this by selecting one of the options offered under the Save As Type box. If you are only interested in the written information, you should select Plain Text, and that is exactly what you will get. The text will be saved, but the page will look very different from the web page. There will probably be different fonts, lettering style and layout, and there won't be any pictures saved. If you want to keep the same layout as the web page, you should select HTML from the Save As Type box. The page will look the same, except there won't be any pictures. They will be replaced by small icons. The benefit of saving these pages is that you can look at them anytime you want without having to connect to the net. Just open your browser, click on the file menu, and select Open. Then, from the dialog box, select the file you want to open. Connecting your computer to the Internet will give you access to many interesting sites, and it will also let you keep up to date with the latest software. You do this by downloading from the website of the browser developer. There will be a hyperlink that you click on to start the process. When you request the download, you will need to provide information about your computer and where you are located. It is possible the program will be stored on several sites around the world, so to download as quickly as possible, it's best to use a site in your own area. Your computer will also need to know where you want to store the new program. A Save As dialog box will open on the screen for you to fill in the details. Usually software would be stored in the Programs folder or directory, but that's your decision. Just click on OK to start the downloading. A window will open on the screen that will show you how the download is progressing. Programs can be very large files and can take a lot of time to download. It's a good idea to do it at a time of day when the Internet is not as busy. Perhaps the last thing at night would be best. Once complete, your computer will be equipped with the latest version of your chosen software to let you effectively access the potential of the Net. This program, Computers Made Easy, Discovering the Internet, has shown you how to access the Internet and the World Wide Web. Using the information contained in this video program will help you easily bring the exciting and entertaining world of the Internet into your home.